side streets of Tokyo's residential areas, you can still find shops like this, selling old-fashioned sweets called dagashi. They're always popular with children. The shelves are packed with snacks and toys. The packaging is colorful and eye-catching. For kids, the dagashi shop is a little paradise. The golden age of the dagashi shop was 50 years ago, during the days of Japan's post-war economic boom. They could be found all over town. Times have changed, and the old sweet shops have virtually vanished. But there are still people who are trying to keep the tradition alive. For Japanese adults, these simple little sweet shops conjure up magical memories of when they were children. On this edition of the In Japanology, we explore the nostalgic appeal of Dagashi sellers, the traditional sweet shops of old Japan. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today, I'm in the city of Kawagoe, which is just north of Tokyo, in Saitama Prefecture. And the street I'm standing in is called Kashiya Yokocho, or in English it would be Sweet Shop Alley. This street has been famous for some hundred years now for its sweet shops, of which there were 70 or 80 back in its heyday of the 1920s and 30s, although only about 10 of them are left now. You can see all of these are made for pretty small kids, I would think. In fact, the shop would appear to be completely stocked with kids' sweets. I can remember stopping off on the way home from school probably about oh, nearly 50 years ago, I would think, when I was in primary school, at shops quite similar to this in London. Although these days in England, I think it'd be pushed to find a shop like this. Sweets tend to be sold in news agents and grocery shops and supermarkets, whatever. And of course there are grown-ups in those. The thing with these is that uh, the, the sweets are priced at as little as 10 yen, which is like 10 cents in America. So, of course, uh, the almost exclusively, the customers are children. It, there's actually a nostalgia boom in Japan at the moment for thing, things of the 50s and 60s. And these sweet shops are very much in the vanguard of that. So first of all, on today's show, we're going to go back and take a look at the roots of that boom. Tokyo's Edogawa Ward lies in the east of the city. In this residential area, a traditional dagashi shop continues to ply its trade. Every evening, the local children gather here, sometimes alone, sometimes with their parents. We live just around the corner, so we come here quite a lot. There aren't many dagashi shops left these days, so... It's nice to have this one here. Tekashi treats are cheap, just five or ten yen apiece, so the children can afford them from their pocket money. Tekashi literally means junk sweets, but for the kids these snacks are like little treasures. There are more than 3,000 different kinds of dagashi treats, all wrapped in colourful packaging that appeals to children. This fruit-flavoured bubble gum has bold pictures of the fruit flavours on the package, perfect for catching a kid's eye. You get six pieces for 20 yen. This gum has been popular for over 60 years. Here's a snack made of corn. There are many different savoury flavours, such as curry or soya sauce. These are the kind of fun foods that kids love. This range of snacks comes in dozens of different flavours, both sweet and savoury. Corn soup, chocolate, spicy kimchi, you name it. There are 15 flavours in all. Try one, and you'll want to try them all. Bite-sized chocolates. These two come in various flavours, such as milk chocolate, mocha, and many more. They're sold one piece at a time, so the children can decide for themselves which one they want to try next. Vibrant packaging that grabs the eye, and lots of different tastes, both sweet and savoury. They may be cheap and simple, but for the children, just making their own choices is fun. 
This is what makes Tagashi treats so appealing. But there's another factor that makes going to a Tagashi shop exciting for kids. These candies, coated in roasted soya bean flour, cost 10 yen each. The children eat them straight away as soon as they get outside of the shop. Look, the stick has a red tip. That means she's won. You won. Like a lucky dip, if you pick the right one, you get another for free. Many items sold at Bagashi shops include lucky bonuses like these. Even though they're only 10 yen each, winning another for free is always a thrill for a child. Tagashi shops sell more than just sweets. They offer simple toys as well. Cheap ones, of course. These are fighting tops. They cost 140 yen each. These traditional toys date back centuries. You have to wind the string carefully. Then you give the top a hefty spin. If your top gets hit or stops spinning, you lose. Here's another old favorite, Menko cards. You chuck your card down on the ground as hard as you can. The aim is to flip your opponent's cards over with the puff of air kicked up by yours. The winner collects their opponent's cards. In this game, you stake your own cards in the hope of winning more. The cards are printed with images of superheroes in television shows, famous sumo wrestlers, or popular entertainers. Collecting the cards with all your favorite stars is part of the fun. Here are baseball stars from the past. There are many different fun things to try. This one's called Supernatural Smoke. The card is coated with a sticky substance. And when you pinch this between your fingers, it produces puffs of smoke. It's made with sulfur, but it's a mystery how it actually works. It's like a kind of magic, which is why it's so popular with children. The Dagashi store, with its bulging shelves of treats and toys, is a veritable wonderland. This place is a paradise. Incredible array of stuff. There's little paper balloons in here for a start. Um, this isn't. What's that? Ooh. Daikon. Japanese big white rabbit radish, but um, pickled in something pink. I'm not quite sure what. Uh, all other kinds of sweets and... Oh. That's a pipe. You, you unscrew the top here and there's sort of chocolate sticky stuff inside that you suck out. And that's a, it's a traditional sweet. I'm sure for kids this would be no end of fun. That's kind of nice too. A little crayon thing with all the different colours in there so you can take them out one by one. Apart from the sweets and the toys and the entertainment value that these shops have for children, kids do actually learn some fairly useful life lessons in these places as well, as we'll see in the next video. Everything on the shelves of a Dagashi shop is cheap. But the children only have a limited amount of money to spend. How many treats can they afford with the little money they've got? They have to do their own sums. Nowadays, primary school children are given about 1,000 to 1,500 yen per month on average. That amount has hardly changed in 30 years. For an adult, 1,500 yen would only be enough for two simple meals. But Dagashi cost as little as 5 yen. Even the most expensive are only 100 yen. Some items have gone up in price along with the cost of living, but overall prices haven't changed much. I'll have these, please! Be 
Picking out some of these sweets, and some of those snacks, how much is it going to add up to? The children have to carefully calculate the prices as they choose their treats. It's an effortless way for them to learn how to handle money. Dagashi sellers also play an important role in helping kids to learn communication skills. This Dagashi shop attracts children from primary school all the way up to middle school. It's a chance for them to interact with kids in other age groups. They also get to know children who go to different schools and speak with other adults besides their parents. Akimoto Masao runs this Dagashi shop with his wife Akiko. They've been keeping an eye on the neighborhood children for 50 years now. It's always lively when the children all come around. It's a lovely atmosphere. I always make a mental note of which kids show up each day. They run up and say, Hey, mister! There are three or four schools around here and I know all the kids. The Dagashi shop is a place where children discover aspects of adult society, like meeting people and handling money. In its own way, it's also a kind of school. In the old days, these dagashi shops would be particularly swamped with children on the day before a school outing, where a whole grade would be taken either to the mountains or the seaside or whatever to see natural scenery, go hiking, all those sort of things. And on the day before the outing, the kids would all come to the dagashi shop and they would stock up with sweets. Each child would be allowed to take sweets up to the value of about 300 yen, sometimes 500 yen. And this would be money that the parents would give the children in addition to their pocket money. So they'd come into one of these shops and they'd stock up on all their favourites to take on the trip. These children have been given an allowance of 300 yen each. Let's see what selection of sweets they pick out. They're free to buy whatever they like with the money. Okay, start! snacks I like, soybean flour coated candies and stuff with a refreshing taste. What did you mainly buy? Well, I like chocolate and stuff. And I like gum too. So I got chocolate and gum mainly. Cheap ones. They come in small packets. Did you do the sums in your head? Yes! Every little thing has a price on it. So, it was quite easy to calculate. I had lots of small stuff, so it was a little hard, but I think I did okay. While they're having fun picking out sweets, children naturally learn how to calculate and how to shop. The golden age of these kind of sweet shops was the late 50s to the 1960s. So for many middle-aged people now, when they think of Dagashi, they automatically go back to that period. We're going to take a look back now to that era, when for many children, Dagashi shops were the focal point of their lives. 200 years ago, when Tokyo was still known as Edo, it was a time of peace. In those days, the city of Edo had a population of around 1 million. One way the government controlled the movement of the citizens was by erecting large gates at the intersections of major thoroughfares. The gatekeepers lived in small dwellings next to the gates and were responsible for opening and closing them. At the busiest crossroads, 
those gatekeepers used to chat with the people going in and out. Many of them began setting up storefronts in front of their houses to sell things to the passing crowds. Sandal thongs, paper, or dumplings and other cheap snacks. They were the forerunners of the Dagashi sellers. Fast forward to the 20th century. The early 1960s was the start of a golden age for Dagashi shops. In those days, few people had televisions. Children mostly played outside. After school, kids would gather at their local Dagashi cellar. For Japan, an unprecedented economic boom was just getting underway. The Shinkansen bullet train went into service, and Japan's electronics and car industries grew rapidly. Dagashi had been handmade up to then, but now they began to be mass-produced in factories. This led to a huge proliferation of varieties. Japan's post-war baby boom generation started going to elementary school in the 1950s. There were about 30 million children in Japan at the time, twice as many as today. These legions of children boosted sales at the Dagashi shops. The children would play in the streets in front of the Dagashi shops, or in vacant plots nearby. They would buy their sweets and toys, and then eat or play with them right on the spot. That was how most children spent their after-school hours. But times changed, and new developments began to eclipse the old Dagashi shops. First came the supermarkets. They sold everything from fresh produce and everyday items to sweets and snacks. People could do all their daily shopping at one time in the supermarket. During the boom years of the economy, more and more supermarkets opened. Mothers would take their children along to the supermarket and let them buy sweets while they shopped for their evening meals. This became a common practice. Then in the 1970s, convenience stores arrived in Japan. Before long, they could be found throughout the country and quickly became an essential fixture of daily life. Besides offering the convenience of selling sweets, drinks and other goods, they stayed open around the clock. Thanks to their centralised operations and inventory management, supermarkets and convenience stores were able to stock a wide range of products with great efficiency. Most Dagashi shops were family-run operations, and there was no way they could compete. At the same time, the number of children was dropping fast. By the 1980s, the rapidly declining birth rate had become a widely discussed phenomenon. The advent of video games also had a huge impact. Children started spending much less time playing outdoors. Instead, they would just sit at home in front of their TVs and consoles or at game arcades. Children no longer gathered at the local Dagashi Sun. And it wasn't long before those traditional sweet shops went out of business. This part of the shop at the back here has been preserved exactly as it would have been in the 1950s and 60s, which of course means that any baby boomer visiting this place would be instantly transported back to their childhood, uh, of course terribly nostalgic. And the things on display here, well, the same sort of toys and cards and artifacts from TV cartoon shows and things that we've already seen, uh, but these are really very antique. These are not actually for sale. Dagashi shops tended to be attached to the owners' houses, which meant that inside it was fairly cramped. 
So the owner would be sitting at the cash register, the children would wander around, gather up whatever sweets they wanted, and then pass them over to the shop owner. And unlike convenience stores and supermarkets and places where basically you have nil verbal contact with the people in the shop, the children did have an opportunity for one-to-one interaction with the shop owners. These days in Japan, especially in urban Japan, people don't even know what their neighbors look like, which is one more reason why middle-aged people tend to look back on the 50s and the 60s with a feeling of nostalgia. And as part of the nostalgia boom, or rather part of one of the effects from it, there's a tendency to reappraise the role of dagashi shops. And in fact, there are even new dagashi opening up these days. The new Odaiba district was developed in the 1990s on landfill in Tokyo Bay. A theme park that's been opened here brings alive what life was like back in the 1950s and 60s. It's proved a big hit with adults reliving their childhood years. And younger visitors also say they feel a sense of nostalgia for those good old days. Never mind that they weren't even born there. Some 2.7 million people have visited this theme park in the past year. You can really feel what it was like back then. It's a new experience for me. It's fun. This Dagashi shop in another part of Tokyo stays open until 3 a.m. That is helping it to draw in office workers returning home late at night. Now that the number of children is declining, this shop has taken to targeting adults instead. Middle-aged men pop traditional candies on a string into their mouths, just like when they were kids. They love the nostalgia, and some customers linger for an hour or more. It takes me back to when I was a kid. There's no going back in time, but coming here is like going back to the way it used to be. There's a movement to resurrect the Dagashi shop experience for today's children too. Sangenjaya is a residential district not far from the centre of Tokyo. Local children visit this Dagashi cellar every day. It looks just like an old-fashioned shop. But in fact, it's a recent arrival, set up with financial assistance from the Metropolitan Government and a Neighbourhood Traders Association. The shopkeeper, Murakami Daisuke, owns a handbag store. For him, selling dagashi is just a side business. Because the shop had been vacant for a while, Murakami and other local merchants wanted to put it to good use. So they banded together to open a shop selling dagashi. The interior was put together by hand. It took them six months to finish it. Jointly owned by the local traders, it has been going for five years now. From a business perspective, selling cheap candies, no matter how many of them, can never be a money-making venture given the prime location. But for Murakami, Just seeing the faces of the children who gather there in the evening gives him a sense of satisfaction. Given today's prices, the feeling of being able to buy something for just 10 yen or a whole bag full for 100 yen, it's wonderful. And the children have to calculate what they are spending and decide for themselves. This is what I want to eat, so this is how I'll spend my money. They have to choose for themselves from all the many options. And that's a great experience. I love watching them. I did it myself when I was their age. Murakami stresses the value of giving the children a chance to socialize and to learn things. This company makes items for dagashi shops. Here it's producing cigarette-shaped sweets. It's also doing its bit to help preserve the dagashi tradition. When you put these candy cigarettes in your mouth, they give off the taste of cocoa and the smell of peppermint. For children, this makes them feel a bit like adults. These sweets have been sold for the same price for a long time, but the soaring price of sugar and other items 
is making it harder and harder for the company to supply the traditional dagashi at the same price. Takao Kagoro is a member of the company's planning division. He works with the production team to create new products. They're trying to reduce the amount of sugar and use less expensive ingredients. They also considered reducing the size of each sweet to cut costs, but they thought this wouldn't go down well with the children. So they're continuing their efforts to produce affordable sweets that are the same taste and size as before. Today they're conducting a taste test. No, it's not good enough. None of the employees are keen on the flavour. Now, after further refinements, a taste test is being done with children. Yummy! The children seem to like the new product. Just seeing the look of enjoyment on their faces makes me happy. The children are spending their own pocket money, so the price has to be right. We want to keep it that way. Tagashi shops used to be a common sight in neighborhoods throughout Japan. But these days, it's hard for Tagashi sellers to continue doing business in the good old-fashioned way. Japan is a country that doesn't have an awful lot of flat land. Most of the country is mountainous, which means that the urban areas tend to be very densely populated. In the years of poverty, immediately after the Second World War, it was a very strong sense of community with family and neighbours that pulled people through. That sense of community is on the wane now, but people can relive it just a little bit by visiting these kind of dagashi shops. The shops also offer children a chance to hone their communication skills and despite the fact that they're so old-fashioned and traditional, they still seem to have an important role to play in Japanese society. Well, that wraps it up for this week. I'm going to do a little shopping on my way home, and I'll see you again next time. we look at Japanese dance, a performance art with a long, deep tradition dating back many centuries. <laughs>